Hello and welcome, this is the project you have at the end of the tutorial. As you can see, you can pause the game, change the keys, and this will be saved and then loaded when we next load the game. So let's get into it. I'll be using this project as a base and all it is is a player that will go left, right and jump and there's a recorded ghost but we won't worry about that and we'll just add the key bindings into this project. So let's put those inputs in, go to your project, project settings, input map and we're going to put move right, move left, jump, pause, then put the inputs in. Make sure your inputs match mine because we're going to use scan codes and once you're happy with that close. We're going to make a button parent and this will be a button where you click on it and you'll set a key. So let's do that now. Create a new node, make sure it's button, give it some text like space. Make sure enabled focus is actually set to none and the reason you do this is that space would actually class as a click and we don't want that if we were setting for example our jump to space. Let's rename this button parent, attach a script. I'll put in the code. This isn't all the code, but we'll come back to it when we've made the rest of the controls. But for now, the action name in this case would be move left, move right, jump, pause. We'd have a do set to make sure that we have to set it before we can then set another one. And then we'll make sure the text is at nothing to indicate to the user that currently you need to type a key to set it. Save the button in the objects folder. Now we're gonna make a container that holds all the key binding controls. Make a new node, you want a canvas layer, name this GU key binding, add a grid container. In the columns we want two, we want to make sure that layout is actually in the center. So this will make sure that our key bindings are always in the center now, no matter what size our window would be. Have grow direction on both, for vertical and horizontal. In custom constants, let's have six and 12. Let's add a label, call this jump. Select grid container, drag in a button parent onto it. Keep it as space because that's the default that we assigned in the input manager. Now highlight the button and label together. Press control D, control D again, and then go back to labels. Move left, move right. You notice that we've got an action name and this is gonna match the project, project settings and these. So jump, we wanna have here. And these are case sensitive, so make sure that these do match. I'll put the rest in now. Move left, move right. Attach the script to the canvas layer at the top. So I'll put this code in here, and like the button, we will come back to this, but I'm gonna finish the button off. But first, let's explain this. So we've got a JSON, which will contain our dictionary of key bindings. These are the defaults, including the scan code. That is space, this is D, and this is A. So let's go back to button parent and we'll put in the input override. You'll notice that we've got an error here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn GUI key bindings into an auto load. So it'll always be loaded in the background. Let's do that now. So first go to 2D, make sure that we're on our key bindings and we wanna control save into your objects. Brilliant. Now we can reference this as an auto load. Go to your project, project settings, auto load, objects, key binding, open, add it, make sure single turn is enabled, close. Now go to our script. We're gonna go back to the key bindings and I'm gonna put a large group of code in and I'll explain it. So let's start with ready because that's what happens when we load this game. So ready will load the keys which will access the function down here but before we do that, we're gonna make sure that the grid container is actually false. We don't wanna be seeing the key bindings when we first load the game up. You'll notice that pause mode here is set to pause mode process. When we do pause the game, this will make sure that the key binding controls are not paused. Obviously, if they were, then the whole game would lock and we wouldn't be able to play it. Load keys checks that if the file that we have exists, we want to delete the old keys, which we'll go over in a second. We'll set the data to the new keys. We'll load the JSON file in as a dictionary. We'll make sure that the actual dictionary is a dictionary. If it isn't, then it's corrupted data. We'll then update our dictionary to the data. So it'll overwrite this. However, we don't have that file. Then what we'll do is we'll save the keys and that'll just save this as the default. So let's go over delete keys first. 
delete all keys, we'll go through every single item in the key direct dictionary. Then we make a var called old key and we're just going to have it as a new input key event. We'll make sure the old key scan code is that of our current item in the dictionary. Then what we're going to do is i will be the name of the action and this will be the key. And what we're doing is action erase event. We want to remove that. You might think, why are we why are we doing this? Well, say if you set up new keys left and right, you don't want A and D still active. This will make sure that they're not. Let's go back to load keys. Now you'll see that we've just done delete keys. Then once all that's done, we can now set up the new keys. And this will only happen if we load up a new file. So let's go to set up keys. What set up new keys is gonna do is like delete keys, it's gonna go through every item in the dictionary. This time we're gonna go through every get node in group button keys, so it's our buttons. We're gonna see if any of the action names matches the button action name. And if it does, then we wanna update that text with something that's more readable. That's why we've got get scan code string. We can't read scan code numbers as letters, it's the numbers, so 86 would be uh, D. Um, we'd rather just see D rather than 86. But like the delete keys, we're going to make a new key. That's a input event key. We'll set the scan code to the new key directionary item we've just got. And this time, instead of erasing an action, we're going to add an action. And this will make sure that we've got our new keys impl implemented. Then finally, at the bottom, you'll have save keys. This will be active every single time we click on a button and press a key. This will actually be activated. And save keys just opens the file to be read in. Then we'll store our dictionary as a JSON file, close it, and we've just saved our keys. Obviously, if we update the dictionary, we'll save it after we've updated it. So every single time, it'll always be present. It'll be the latest version. So we have a problem. Grid container is instantly hidden as soon as we load the application. We want to then show this by pressing the escape key. And to do that, we're going to go to our process. You'll see here that I've got a key press for pause, which is my escape key. And if I do that, we do, we're going to toggle pause. So if, if pause is not equal to true, then it has to be false. If it's equal to false, it has to be true. And then what we'll do is make sure the grid container's visibility is dependent on the pause. So if the pause is true, then of course, we're going to show the grid. If it's false, we'll hide the grid. Now we're going to go back to button parent. So once the player presses the button, we're going to have it set true. So if do set is true, we know we've just pressed the button. Is the key a key press? Then we're going to remove the old key with these three lines. And we do that by setting up a new key input. We check that the scan code matches the action name, which is up here, which we've just set. Then we'll make sure that we delete that action name and that key that goes with the action. Then action add event is going to be called. And the action name, let's just press, say we press the uh, jump key, will be called jump. And the event will be the key press we've just passed. We want to change the text of the button to something that the player can read. We don't want to show scan code. So we use the scan code, pass it into this function, get scan code string, and it will be a readable form for us. We'll then update the dictionary and make sure we get the action name and set that scan code. And once we've done that, we'll save the dictionary. We're now finished, so we can set do false to false, which means we can reset the key again if we wish. But let's go back to the save keys. We've covered this before, but we'll just look at it again. So every single new key press that's saved, we'll call this function save keys, and it just keeps the dictionary latest. So let's see if this has worked. We'll press play. You'll see the ghost moved around. If I press escape, it should stop. And these are our defaults, which we put into the input mat. So I'm going to change these to the arrow keys. So up, left, right. If I press escape, now I'm using the arrow keys. I can't use the AED anymore because we've deleted them. So now if I close down the game, I should be able to open it and this should retain the arrow keys. Yeah, brilliant. If I press escape, you see up, left, right, whereas previously it was space AD. And that concludes the end of the tutorial. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.